Hi, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today I'm going to, to talk about our Climate Security Observatory, um, a decision support tool supposed to um, support policymakers in addressing the complexity of the climate security nexus. This presentation includes the work of our team, CGR, but also uh, part of the collaboration with the FAO EPIC team as a division. I will be talking about the motivation, research objectives, and uh, research questions, but uh, then I will describe the integrated approach that we are using, we have designed to address the complexity of the climate security nexus. I will present some preliminary results for the case of Nigeria and then the next steps in our research. We believe that climate security is a strategic issue for global stability, prosperity, and peace. And this is because the world is less peaceful, climate, the climate crisis is increasing, and vulnerability and risks such as food insecurity are worsening. About 400, 490 out of the 800 million people facing chronic, chronic food insecurity are located in 21 uh, uh, countries affected by conflict and insecurity. And countries with high level of hunger uh, are also those that are mostly affected, often highly affected and vulnerable to climate impacts. Climate impacts are uh, significantly affecting food availability, food quality, access to food security in general. And then we learned throughout this conference and also from the presentation by John Ordinant yesterday that there exists a high level of correlation between food insecurity and conflict. Therefore, these three systems these three risks are highly correlated, are highly interlinked. The climate risks, food insecurity, socioeconomic risks, and conflict. So when we study the climate security nexus, we are really facing uh, several challenges. The first is that there is a lack of robust and localized and policy relevant evidence on the specific pathways that link climate to, to conflict. We also need to understand when study the climate security nexus, the climate adaptation and climate solutions are not always successful. Maladaptation responses to climate change have uh, exacerbated in certain occasions, in certain contexts, marginalization and exclusions that are co commonly understood and, and recognized as drivers of conflict. Finally, we need to understand that this nexus is incredibly complex. It's not linear, it's not direct, uh, and it is highly heterogeneous, both spatially and uh, temporally. So our research really uh, aims to respond and address these research gaps, but also to provide policy-relevant solutions and answers. Therefore, our research questions are organized across four main areas. We first would like to understand what are the mechanisms whereby climate can uh, affect the intensity and likelihood of conflict, the how question. Then we would like to understand the where question. So where are those areas that, could, that are uh, more vulnerable to, to climate insecurity risks, supporting and helping policymakers in the day targeting a prioritization of uh, geographical areas. Then the who question, who are the groups that are more, more vulnerable to these risks? Again, uh, helping uh, policymakers prioritizing uh, and, and targeting. But then finally, the, the last question, probably the most difficult one, the what questions. Once we understand that the climate security nexus exists, once we understand that climate can increase the likelihood and intensity of conflict, what should we be doing to mitigate and break the cycle between climate and conflict? So we provide support to policymakers and then partners in designing climate security sensitive interventions and also uh, investment plans to prioritize uh, for policymakers. So our integrated approach really builds on these research gaps and these research, uh, these research questions in a way that we want to acknowledge and honor and, and, and account for the complexity, non-linearity and heterogeneity of this nexus. And we do so by utilizing and embracing a complexity and, and a range of different uh, type of data and, uh, and approaches and methods. Because our idea and our assumption is that this nexus is incredibly complex, we need to be be able to look at it from different perspectives using conventional as well as unconventional data and approaches. Our ambition is to qualify and quantify this nexus. So we start first with the qualification of this nexus, the first step on the, on the top. And we use data-driven literature review uh, combined with content analysis to extrapolate and define what we call the climate security pathways, uh, narratives that essentially identify those mechanisms whereby climate can lead to uh, conflict. 
We then move uh, into uh, the understanding of the policy environment, our second step. This is a, a st an important step because uh, it allows us to understand whether these narratives are embedded in the policy actions and policy uh, documents, as well as in the policy discussions. So we, uh, do, we run some go uh, governance coherence assessments, look in the policy documents, but also we look at the communications of policymakers in each of the targeted countries to understand whether policymakers are actually aware and they are talking about it. So once the qualification of this nexus is, is completed, we then move in the testing using data-driven approaches whether these mechanisms that we have identified are actually relevant uh, from a data uh, standpoint. So we use a combination of networks, spatial analysis, and econometric analysis for this. And finally, the most important step of it all, which is the validation in the field. We run a set of fieldwork activities to develop a common vision of climate security directly with the communities and local stakeholders, but also we develop Develop, we co-design solutions to mitigate this nexus. So now an example from Nigeria. Um, this is an example of our climate security pathways. You don't have to look at all of the boxes here, but just focus on the one in yellow. Um, a graph such as this um, is supposed to really summarize the complexity and interconnections of the three systems, the ecological system, socioeconomic systems, and the political system. Uh, but in summary, what we find for Nigeria is that we can think of three main mechanisms or pathways whereby climate can lead to uh, uh, more conflict and more intense conflict. The first is a resource pathway, um, uh, um, resource availability pathway. Uh, this pathway essentially is reflective of the farmers herders conflict um, due to the impact that climate, climate has on natural resources that, that it pushes and forces pastoral, pastoralist communities to change their grazing routes and to look for, uh, the, for uh, accessing natural resources such as land, water and pasture in, in other areas, inevitably conflicting with, with farmers uh, that are settled in those areas. We have many examples from the northern area, the semi-arid areas in, in Nigeria, as well as from central, central state, the Benue and Azarawa states. The second pathway is reflective of the impact that climate has on the erosion of livelihoods and, and food insecurities. The erosion of, of livelihoods and the lack of uh, other livelihood opportunities in a certain context can also, coupled with the weak governance and marginalization, lead to conflict and uh, intercommunal tensions, um, for example, uh, with, uh, uh, with, with the mig rural urban migration uh, or because of agriculture and livestock and fishery losses, uh, we, we have examples that are on, on how desertification and environmental challenges um, and water and land depletion have actually created the tensions and conflicts in the countries. Uh, the third pathway is related to the fossil fuel and environmental degradation uh, and livelihood insecurities. Um, this essentially reflects the idea that the, the oil industry is impacting, is creating um, land degradation, water pollution, is affecting natural resources, and coupled with weak governance, poor environmental protection framework, specifically inequality in a generation, in co-generating co benefits for the local communities, uh, have created tensions and conflict in certain areas. Um, despite the existence, so uh, uh, overall these three pathways identify four main mechanisms. A low productivity and agricultural, livestock and fisheries sector, uh, food insecurity, inequality and migration. So despite the uh, evidence in the literature and in our documents that we have examined uh, on the existence of this nexus, we also look at the policy documents and we actually find that policymakers are not really talking about it. These, these narratives are not really present in policy documents nor in the conversation, so we run social media analysis for that. Um, the next step is to really look at data. So what are the, the, the data telling us? We use ACLE data to identify first uh, conflict clusters, so areas where we have high, moderate, limited conflict. We overlay that to the climatic conditions uh, using very, very high resolution uh, data to identify then areas where we have high level of conflict and, and cl a, a, a harsh climatic condition, as well as a range of a combination of these two. And then we link this with other insecurities, those 
pathways and mechanisms that we have identified in our qualification steps. And what we see is that we can really uh, identify those areas where uh, harsh climatic conditions as well as uh, high intensity of conflict are co-occurring with a set of other insecurities that are in affected by climate. This is the case, for instance, of the, the Wurno and, uh, and the Kuare uh, local authorities where we, we see a, a, a high uh, level of migration and, and inequality risks as well as harsh conflict and harsh climate. And then other um, risks and insecurities are across the countries in other locations, as, as indicated. Um, then the next step uh, in, in, in looking at the data, what the data are telling us, is to really understand whether there exists a statistically significant correlation in, in some of these mechanisms that we have identified in the climate security pathways. And in this case, we use a three-level variable, three-variable causal mediation model to identify the direct and indirect impact of climate variability on conflict via specific mechanisms for the food insecurity. We use DHS data as well as other data combined with the climate climate conflict data, and uh, our results uh, show that, that uh, the, um, there exists an indirect uh, effect of, of climate. Climate is uh, uh, a threat multiplier exacerbating food insecurity, so you see that the, the, there is a statistical uh, significant correlation uh, in there affecting food insecurity, which in turn also affect, affects the number of, of violent conflict uh, at local level. So we have evidence that this is happening. What are the next steps? Um, one of the, the issues that I mentioned before is the highly uh, level, uh, the high level of heterogeneity, uh, spatial heterogeneity. So we are we're going to tackle these issues adopting an approach that has been developed by FAO, the EPIC team that I mentioned before, uh, um, it, which, which is using the random coefficient model. One of the advantages of the random coefficient model compared to other models is that it produces a specific coefficients of results that are um, indicative that, that, that are related to the specific sub sub-administrative unit that, that, that under the analysis. So we are really able to identify the effect of, of climate on conflict at a highly localized level. But also a good, a good advantage of this model is that it allows us not only to identify without the, the, the current climate secu insecurity hotspots, but we're able to also identify what are the future uh, climate security hotspots. So what we call the climate vulnerability, what, what FAO calls the climate vulnerability hotspot. So we, we are going to, uh, this is an example from Somalia, but we are going to implement this for our countries uh, with our climate security observatory. Then the final step is the validation. We will use a transformative scenario planning uh, to, uh, to, to develop, um, construct future story, characterize the climate security uh, risks and define uh, actions, solutions to mitigate the impact of climate and conflict directly with the communities and the local stakeholders in specific hotspots in each country. The Climate Security Observatory uh, will be um, in the future, and, and our ambition is to run it to, to, to have a global coverage for our analysis. At the moment, we have developed analysis for selected countries in Africa. You see those one in grey, seven countries in Africa, and we are advancing on our analysis specifically as part of our Climber uh, One CGR initiatives in five countries, uh, Guatemala, Senegal, Kenya, Zambia, and the Philippines. Uh, it will be launched for the first time in Kenya and Senegal in January 2020 then followed by, uh, by other countries in the, in the, in the remaining years. Thank you.